Here we have an animated map of the Battle of Vimy Ridge, particularly the fighting that took place on April 9th, 1917. As you can see here, they're drawing out some of the geographic features of the ridge, including woods, towns, villages, farms, and even some of the craters created during the earlier fighting. They're going to highlight some of the names that become associated with the battle. These include the Bois de la Folie, Petit Vimy, Farbu, Farbu Wood, Dilus, Hill 145, where the Vimy Memorial stands today, Kennedy Crater, and behind the Canadian lines, you'll see Nouvelle Saint Vas used as an important hub for logistics. Quick note about the map. All of this is done by hand at certain points in the footage. Pause it on the frame level, you can see the hands moving things around. So it's quite amazing they were able to do this at the time. So now as you can see, they're drawing in the German trench lines. It's quite an extensive network of trenches. You can see the front line. You can see the communication trenches needed to reach back into the further parts of the position for the infantry to move forward and backward. It's quite extensive, just like most places on the Western Front. As they finish drawing in the German lines, I want to take a minute to talk about the Canadian Corps and its commanders. In command of the Canadian Corps is Julian and Bing, a British regular officer. Leading the artillery is Edward Morrison, and the chief engineer of the Canadian Corps is William Lindsay. These three gentlemen often don't get mentioned too much when it comes to Vimy Ridge, so I wanted to make sure that they were included in this, as they were very important to the operations. The first boundary they're drawing is the 1st Canadian Infantry Division, led by Arthur Curry. Often thought that he was leading the Canadian Corps at Vimy Ridge, obviously he was not. Curry would go on to command the Canadian Corps after Bing was promoted to the army level, in part due to the success at Vimy Ridge. Moving on to the second division is Henry Bernstall is the commander on the day of the attack. And now to the third division, it is commanded by Louis Lipset who was later killed in the war commanding a British division. And with the 4th Division, you have David Watson. Also, now they are going to show the objective lines. There's multiple objectives for each of the divisions, and some had more than others. So there are four in total, as you can see here. For all of the Canadian Corps, not every division has four objectives. The ones on the right have more objectives to take. Positions on the left of the ridge were more difficult to take, so they gave the 1st and 2nd Division more objectives. So now we're moving into the battle itself. Here is the key to the various things you're about to see with the German and Canadian lines and the artillery, which plays a massive role in this battle. Again, you can see the different types of artillery. You have shell fire, the standing barrage hitting the German positions, and then the rolling barrage, which this battle is very famous for. So this is quite an interesting way of showing the infantry moving in. Of course, this is a very well-known part of the battle where the infantry goes underground or moves in to jump off trenches so that they can get a jump on the Germans, but also hide from artillery as best as possible, particularly in the tunnels that are dug underneath the ridge and had been dug under the ridge for hundreds of years, but that were extended when the war began and throughout it. So this is really interesting, seeing all the infantry move into position. The map is about to get quite chaotic very quickly when the battle starts itself. So zero hour is when the bombardment begins. They open fire on the German positions. Of course, that had been done previously. They had been bombarding the Germans for a week. Some of the Germans called it the week of suffering. So now as the rolling barrage moves forward, you can see the infantry right in behind it, moving into position. And again, at some places, it's more successful than others. The infantry move quite well in the 1st and 2nd and 3rd Divisions. The 4th Division, however, has a more difficult time as the battle commences and moves forward. 
Hill 145, the highest point of the ridge, is very difficult to take and doesn't fall on the 9th. It takes more of an effort and we won't see that on this map. So here you can see the second objectives being advanced upon by the divisions that have those with the first, second, and third divisions moving forward. Again, at the left-hand side, you can see the fourth division really struggling in their sector. So the objectives are captured on schedule. Some are taken early, but that allows the advance to continue on schedule. And particularly again, in the first and second division areas of the line, the advance continues on to the third objective. All again, the artillery is supporting this attack with a rolling barrage. It's all timed as the infantry needs to keep up with it to use the protection to move forward. They highlight that they lose trench being captured at 11 a.m. again on schedule. Theory of the fighting continuing, moving on to the third objective taken in the early afternoon. They begin to consolidate their positions. They have to hold, they have to dig in because a lot of the German trenches were destroyed by the artillery fire that went on for an extended period of time. So they had to bring everything with them, the sandbags, barbed wire, ammunition, all of that. So here now we see the fourth line being taken again on the first and second division front. And again, bringing your attention back down to the left-hand side, particularly around the Kennedy Crater and Hill 145. It's a very intense battle still taking place. Uh, in fact, you can see the reinforcements that need to come to the position in the 4th Division to help take those positions. Again, switching back to the other side, you see the final positions are captured in the later afternoon, where they are able to dig in and hold off against the various German counterattacks. You can see it throughout the map is the prisoners of war moving back. A high number of German prisoners are taken during the advance on the ridge, and you can see them as little triangles moving back the rear area of the Canadian Corps. The Battle of Vimy Ridge is an overall success for the Canadian Corps, particularly on the 9th. I already mentioned that Hill 145 doesn't fall until later. That is taken on the 10th. The last strategic holdout not mentioned here is called the Pimple. That doesn't fall until a few more days later, still in the 4th Division sector. So again, overall, the Battle of Vimy Ridge is very successful for the Canadian Corps, particularly as they had lots of time to plan, train, and prepare for the offensive. I have some recommendations if you want to do further reading about the Battle of Vimy Ridge. Tim Cook has done the best job by far, in my opinion, on covering this battle. He has a whole book on the battle in and of itself, talking about the developments I've covered here in more depth, but also looking at the myth and the legend that is Vimy Ridge and what that has meant to Canadian society since the battle. Also his earlier book, looking at the Canadian Corps more generally. Vimy obviously plays a massive role in that, and you should check that out too. It's called Shock Troops. Both of these are linked down below. Check out this video where I discuss if Vimy was really the birth of Canada.